we are not in Hawaii anymore. What is going on guys? Welcome back to another episode of Ryan Myers Expeditions. Crossing from the Bahamas back to Hawaii and I had to stop here in San Diego and see my whole family. Posted an Instagram, reaching out, looking to see if anybody had an extra spot on their boat. And guys, this community is so cool because instantly had an offer for my new friend Patrick. Never met this guy before, never met any of these guys. But now we're about 20 miles offshore looking for some fish. So Patrick brought me out to this spot that I've dove one time before and that time was absolutely epic. I shot my first bluefin tuna. I shot my first yellowtail here in California. I even saw a marlin. So I've got really high hopes for today. He said there's been some white sea bass out here. There's been some yellowtail. I landed last night at about nine o'clock and my sport tube did not make it on the plane. So I've managed to kind of piece together a a really, a really raggedy group of gear here. I'm not exactly sure what I'm shooting for a gun yet. Honestly, I have, I have no idea what the situation is here. We got, we got a, a group of random guns, but in true California fashion, I'm definitely gonna be shooting something that weighs like 30 pounds and has like nine bands on it. This is a heck of a time to dive Southern California. The tuna are all over the place, but what I'm really, really interested in is a white sea bass. My buddy got one right here on the same spot yesterday. And the guys I'm with right now, Patrick, shot one last weekend on the boat right here in this exact same spot. So I've got really high hopes. I've never seen one before in the water and I'm, I'm freaking thrilled. I'm gonna put on my hodgepodge group of random gear and we're gonna see you guys in the water. So right when I got in the water, I remember feeling really, really uncomfortable. I had a five mil wetsuit on for the first time in like a really long time. And because that wetsuit is thicker than I'm used to, I have to wear a lot more lead than I'm used to. And instead of going for a stiffer pair of fins, which is kind of what I do when I need to wear more lead to push my whole body around, I had my brother's old crappy plastic fins. And I've told you guys this in the past, I'm like, oh, your fins don't really matter. Let me tell you, I was drowning. It was like I had trash bags on my feet. I was really pretty surprised. And it took a lot more for me to kind of get my bearings and become comfortable in this kind of new environment. Combine that with my irrational fear of great whites and these sea lions that would just come out of nowhere. And it really took a little bit more for me to get comfortable. While I was busy just trying not to drown and get my bearings, Patrick put the first one on the board, a really, really nice yellowtail. Nice! It's a giant! Oh yeah. Nicely done! Okay. Nicely done, man! Look at that! <laughs> Cruising along the surface, huh? Damn! Nice! Before Patrick's fish, it was really kind of slow, but now we had seen him land that fish, we knew they were out here, and we all kind of went diving with a renewed sense of purpose. And what's kind of unique about California diving sometimes is that it occurs kind of a lot shallower than I'm used to. And I think because of that, it seems to be a little bit more acceptable to spread out. You know, out here in Hawaii, we almost always dive one up, one down, really watching each other. Whereas Californians tend to, tend to kind of spread out a little bit more is kind of what I've seen as you get out in that kelp and you kind of really want to be extra sneaky and quiet. So I kind of found myself kind of edging around the spot, kind of into the rougher section of the island where I thought that there might be some more fish. And when I got over there, there really was a lot more life. You could tell by all that bait action going on and then a yellowtail came cruising right into me and I managed to stick it with like this nine banded cannon. I was pretty far from the boat and I really did not want to swim back to it, but I also didn't want to put the fish on my float because I figured that was just asking for the sea lions to come and take it. So instead what I did is I put it on my belt, kind of like we would out in Hawaii. And what that does is that actually allows me to protect the fish and keep it close to my body and protect it from those sea lions or sharks or anything else that might want to come and get it. And when I did that, I actually saw my ghost, the fish that I was looking for, a white sea bass cruising around, just cruising on the bottom. And I swam down and tried to wait for it to come over to me, but I guess that's not how it's done because it didn't turn around and come over to me. It just kind of kept going on its way. So now that I knew they were here though, I went into like hardcore, oh my God, white sea bass, this could be the day. And I actually saw him 
like two or three more times, but never managed to really get it on camera because as they say, these things really are like ghosts. They would just kind of appear out of nowhere and then just disappear again. And I'd be like, I didn't even, I didn't even have a chance to dive before I like saw it and it was gone. So my solution to that was to kind of really spend some time hanging out in the area where I kept kind of seeing them, hoping that maybe I would bump into one while I was already down near the bottom. While I was doing that, I was kind of in that more fishy zone and I had another yellowtail kind of cruise right on past me, but I didn't want to put two fish on my belt. I didn't want to risk trading that, you know, swimming all the way back to ditch this, this two yellowtail. I, I would much rather have kept hunting for the white sea bass. So I let this guy pass. We'd been seeing a lot of these like monster calicos, but I hadn't seen one quite this big that was willing to give me a shot. And I know you guys are all gonna freak out about me shooting this slip tip down in the rocks, and you guys are exactly right. This was a total douchebag move, but I kind of go out there with the impression of like, my gear is expendable, and this calico was worth that Mori slip tip. And if that Mori slip tip got smashed, I'd buy this dude a new one and it wouldn't be that big a deal because this fish to me was worth it. And that's the way I always treat a shaft if I'm shooting at something next to a shark or in a cave or anything like that. The gear is expendable when you're kind of looking to get these fish. What was not expendable though was Devin's gun. And because I'm not used to shooting a breakaway, I shot this calico, threw the gun behind me, went for the fish, totally forgot that it was drifting out on the surface. But luckily the guys showed up right after that and we were able to drive the boat around and find it because that was not something that I really wanted to replace. First spot there is freaking cool. Sick to get in the water here in California and just see how different it is and how much life there is out there. I got one nice yellowtail myself. Little small guy. Fish of the day right there. Patrick with the stud. Nice. And then look at this guy. My first ever calico bass. It's a stud calico. He's a stud. That guy's a beast. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that slip tip, bro. <laughs> You're good, man. <laughs> so I borrow this guy's gun, blast his slip tip into the rocks. Then I forget that I'm on a breakaway. So I just let the gun go and I'm all the way on the back side of the island and I'm like, oh my God, terrified. I'm like, it's gone. I'll never see it again. And then here comes the boat and I'm like, save me. And then we found it. So disaster averted. Like a kook. I lost the gun. We got one more quick spot to check, and then I think we're out of here for 4th of July barbecue. <laughs> well guys, we made it back. Absolutely fantastic first day diving here in San Diego. By far my biggest calico, and definitely a delicious yellowtail, all of a shot fish. I'm gonna go meet up with my family right now, cook all these on the beach and watch the fireworks, but guys, I cannot thank you enough. Patrick, nothing is cooler than a totally random Instagram post that you responded to, and now we're friends. Now I gotta return the favor. You gotta meet me out in Hawaii, and I'll take you out there and, uh, and show you how it's done. You're the man. So we arrived at our picnic spot here. A million people here, 4th of July, but I'm gonna fry up these fish that I just shot this morning right here on the grass. Check out the difference of that calico and that yellowtail and what the meat looks like. Super white like a grouper. And then that pinkish that you want for that sashimi grade hamachi. The way I'm gonna do this is kind of one of my, one of my favorite, simple, quick, fast, easy ways. Eggs, progresso breadcrumbs, oil, fire, that is it, super simple. The nuggets are flawless. They look amazing. <laughs> oh wow, delicious. Maybe grab the fruits. Mother? <laughs> amazing, amazing. Look at the steam coming off, they're amazing. Thank you. Well guys, successful day. Managed to go offshore, make some brand new friends, find our dinner, and then fry it up right here before watching July 4th fireworks with the family. That's it. Doesn't get much better than this. Thank you guys so much for watching. It's just the beginning of the San Diego series. We've got another video. We're going for bluefin tuna tomorrow or the next day. So stay tuned. We'll see you guys next time right here on Ryan Myers Expeditions.